here. We have five or six brief remarks about Cindy. The first is offered by the McWilliams good friend Bob Otter from the class of 1993, who at the last minute had to go to Washington, D.C., but he sent me his remarks, so bear with me a second. It was the spring of 1991, and I was touring schools with my parents for the second time in three years, for which I referred to as my high school mulligan. <laughs> the first drive didn't produce a desired result. It was time to tee it up again. We parked in a circle out here, and my father held the door for me as I walked into the schoolhouse for the first time. To be honest, he was holding the door for my mother, and I walked right in front of her without skipping a beat. <laughs> Quickly real realizing I had just committed an offense that was that in our family falls somewhere between kidnapping and murder, <laughs> I sheepishly looked at my dad and saw the vein in his forehead start to pop. As his mouth began to open, I lowered my head, shut my eyes, and heard, Welcome to Millbrook, you must be Bobby Otter. <laughs> Cindy McWilliams came to the rescue and around the corner with her hand outstretched, and I immediately... <laughs> Good timing. <coughs> I, I, I saw the vein in my father's head to pop. Welcome to Millbrook. Cindy McWilliams came around the corner, hand outstretched, and I immediately fell in love with this woman. Little did I know that day how impactful those five words that Cindy greeted me with would be. You don't think of those things as a 16-year-old, but you sure do 27 years later. Everyone in this room knows how special Millbrook is, and the amazing brand of special is made up of lots of different things. The school's beautiful location, the beautiful facilities, the school's mission, its culture, and of course the people. I would argue that the people are what make up that culture, and there's no one that embodies that culture and that amazing brand more than Cindy McWilliams. It was about a month into my first semester on campus, on a beautiful fall afternoon when Cindy walked by me on the quad. I was sitting in the grass with my girlfriend, Becky Tomchin. I don't recall exactly what we were discussing. I'm sure it was related to mathematics, the moon's effect on tidal flow, something along those lines. Cindy never broke stride. I'm not even sure she made eye, eye contact. She just said three simple words as she briskly walked by. Bobby, follow me. <laughs> As I followed her into her office, a lot was going through my mind. What have I done? How much trouble am I in? She asked me to close the door and have a seat. How do you like it here, she said. I love it, Mrs. McWilliams, it's great. I see you're getting to know the student body. <laughs> I'm not sure I even had a response to that other than a blush. Do you know your way around campus yet? I do know my way around campus, yes. Great. Then you are giving a tour to a respective family at 2.30 this afternoon before <laughs> soccer practice. I'm pretty sure I have to be in practice early, Mrs. Williams. The coach needs me to. I'm married to the coach. I'll be sure to let him know. <laughs> I hadn't really thought about becoming a tour guide, Mrs. McWilliams. Well, you've got between now and 2.30 to think about it. I'll see you then. <laughs> Well, I gave the tour and what seemed like a thousand more of them over the next two years. And my work with the admissions team created some of the fondest memories here. I don't know if Cindy challenged me on purpose that fall afternoon to get me doing something I hadn't done before, or if she didn't like the thought of me dating Be Becky Thompson. I do want to believe it was the former, though, rather than the latter. But either way, it was a great experience. It was through my work with Cindy in the admissions office that I really got to see firsthand her passion, not just for Millbrook, but for the students as well, and her absolute love of helping them succeed. She was an educator, mentor, mom to so many of us, and it didn't matter if you were a kid from the Upper East Side or a kid from God. We were all equal in her eyes, and while her approach might have been different with each of us, the outcome was just the same. We all left here better people than we arrived, there were a thousand Millbrook alumni who could say those same exact words about Cindy. In my brief two years on campus, I was able to forge great relationships with several teachers, their spouses, and their children. 
but Cindy, Rick, Trevor, and Carly were my second family. And all these years later, I still regard them as such. I used to regularly go to babysit Trevor and Carly. They quickly became the younger siblings I never had. One of the hardest parts of graduating from Millbrook was saying goodbye to the two of them. <clears throat> when I spoke at Rick's retirement a couple of years ago, I mentioned that there are only a few people outside of your actual family that you can unequivocally say changed your life for the better. And Cindy and Rick have certainly done that for me. Millbrook will be a different place without a McWilliams on the roster. Cindy, thank you on behalf of all the students and alumni whose lives you have touched. We're all so lucky to have crossed your path and been blessed by our friendship. Congratulations on a wonderful career. Enjoy your next chapter. You have more than earned it. Cheers. 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 Now it's my great pleasure to call to the podium Ann Putnam, the class of 1995, <laughs> who also worked in the development office for several years. We enjoyed working with Ann. She became a trustee. And uh, we welcome her back today. Thank you. Thank you. So I know we're all here <laughs> to be roasting Cindy. And I don't like usually getting in front of a crowd, especially when there's so many familiar faces. But I know that this is a welcoming community. And we're here for a very wonderful occasion. So as I thought about what I would like to say this afternoon, I drew back to my Millbrook experience. And what I recognize is that we are all here as learners, lifelong learners, and there's a number of things that we do as we learn throughout our years. And one of the intersections that Cindy and I have shared are books. So I thought that I would frame my remarks as in a novel, which brought me to a recent letter that she sent to me and had a few remarks in it that paralleled what I thought my inspiration would be this afternoon. When she was writing a very special note to thank me for my annual gift, she went beyond to reflect on a lot of the occasions that we had spent together. And in her own pen, she commented on the alumni reports that I wrote when I visited a lot of you as I was traveling for the development office. And in her pen, she said that they read like her favorite novel. So it's appropriate that I start by framing my research around a blog where I read what it takes to write a good novel. And while this blog writer said that there isn't a magic formula and you don't have to take a specific route, many structures <coughs> exist, there's always one protagonist. This protagonist is some character that is well liked, admired by all, and here in this novel, it is our city. So the advice to this writer, up and coming writer, was to make the story an adventure and to think about how all the intersections of people's lives pull it together to become its final volume. So that's why we're all here today. So while my partner said that if I mention the word chapters it might get a little bit too long, <laughs> I'm going to go through a few chapters of the life that I have spent with Cindy McWilliams and how my opportunity to be here on campus is intersected with the entire family. So I'm grateful for, similar to Bob's story, my introduction down School Road into the admissions office where, yes, my mother was the one who was probably a little bit disgruntled about me leaving home, but also took more interview time than myself in getting to know Cindy because she really wanted to find the right fit for the school and the institution that she would turn her daughter over to for her upbringing. I'm happy to say that my mother was not disappointed. I think I was even more relieved that she left and I got to stay. <laughs> and the rest is history as Cindy became my advisor, who led me through challenging times of adapting to a private school from a public, small, rural school that I had grown up in and also through the family connection, I was able to become comfortable in babysitting Carly and Trevor, in seeing Rick on the soccer field and in the studio, plus then getting to experience even their family life by going to church on Sunday, and then sitting around the dining room table. Those were the experiences that brought me to my second chapter of Millbrook School. 
Cindy was kind enough to see that maybe I had some potential and she invited me back as a summer intern when she was in the admissions office such that I got to do some special projects and as you know an early jobs when you're starting out you think this is a great experience you get to live by yourself and get to know people who are adults and they have fun conversations and you do some recreation well Cindy sorry this is a little bit more about Rick but Rick was the one who had to come to my aid as I was rollerblading around campus one afternoon and took a tumble when there was a speed bump behind the dining hall, if anybody remembers, <laughs> down by the service buildings, that I stumbled upon with rollerblades and <laughs> hit the ground with my exterior uh, <laughs> very much on the pavement. So thank you for lending me Rick at that time and having his first aid come in handy when I was just a young college intern. Anytime. But, <laughs> but mostly for the opportunity to think that I had some potential in establishing myself as a professional woman, as you were showing me along the way. Which gets me to part three, or the third chapter, of my life with Cindy and the Millbrook School, where I became a full-time staff member. And growing into the fold with Bob and Nancy and the rest of the team in the alumni office, was really that step of my career where I could find my own and, and learn who I was. And it was those times when I think even Cindy and I would go down to Mabbittsville for a latte or just have a conversation about what professional challenges we were facing or even personal things that we were pursuing. There were bike rides along the hills and there were also those times when we were just sharing in some social opportunities. But the one, which brings me back to the book, is that she asked me to join the book club at Millbrook School. So I was glad to be a part of um, many of the people in the room who shared books and inspiration along that way as well. <clears throat> chapter four, this is the final chapter. I did have a wonderful stint as a trustee at Millbrook School just recently having stepped down. And in those times, while my life didn't intersect with Cindy's as much, she was a host to me when I would come back for our quarterly meetings. And it was really the time that we shared in the kitchen late night. I'd come back from meetings and she'd have a glass of Chardonnay meeting for me. <laughs> and we'd talk about what was going on. What was going on at campus, what was going on in the family. And all of those intersections really took hold such that I knew that there was a personal and a professional <clears throat> network that I had established and that the mentorship that she had provided me over all the years from student through to my professional career had really taken hold. And it's with that that I think about how lives intersect, how these chapters are ongoing, and what we need to do is to really acknowledge that. So I thought about where have we been? And no one in the back room is the so sure. <laughs> But I went to my bookshelf when I started to think about preparing this and knew this was somewhere, didn't quite know where. It's on the shelf very prominently and it's inscribed by the entire McWilliams family who said to me that they wanted to share all of the places that I have gone. And so it's wonderful to say to Cindy tonight, congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. So in the acknowledgments of this book, I raise my glass to Cindy, who's been a nurturer and comforter for her remarkable and inspiring career at an institution we all love, for her husband and family, Carly, Rick, Trevor, who have also shepherded us all along the way. May she always be our friend, and share the places she'll go to the next chapters of your life. We hope that we're all a part of that. Thank you, Ann. Is Kevin Sojourner?
Andrea in the room? He is. Hi, Bob. You're up. Okay. <laughs> you told me 2.30. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll talk later. Kevin Sutton, former member of our faculty, in the admissions office, development office, former hockey coach, great fellow, our friend. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. It's uh, great to be back on campus and see so many familiar faces, lots of memories here in this room, uh, almost overwhelming. My relationship with Cindy began in the spring of 1998 during my final weeks at Colby. Looking for a job in independent boarding schools, I had just received an offer to work at South Kent. When Milbrook called and invited me to campus for an interview. Looking back and knowing what I know now, I must say, thank you. <laughs> I remember my visit well. My tour guide was Billy D, Billy Diamond, who I just saw after all these years. Thank you, Billy. My pleasure. <laughs> then there was time with Bob Howe, Paul Stilato, Drew, and of course, Cindy. Actually, as I was driving away from campus that day, I was certain that I was not getting the job. Being interviewed by Cindy was like talking to my mother, <laughs> who also happens to be named Cindy. <laughs> with my resume in hand, Cindy peppered me with questions and probed until she had what she wanted. In particular, I was worried because she learned that being a customer relations employee during the summer at the Chatham Squire at Cape Cod really just meant that I was a bouncer who checked IDs. <laughs> Whether you look past it or appreciated it or a little of both, thank you. I love my time in admissions. In addition to working with Cindy, there was Brooks Fail, Diane Mazarone, and Melanie Farrington, Mike Fuller, Tracy Jasinski, now Wetmore, and Ann Putnam, who interned for a summer. We had fun, we worked as a team, and we enrolled some remarkable students and families. Those were special years to me, and I know to Cindy. Early on and over my 14 years of working at Millbrook, a number of things were especially evident to me about Cindy McWilliams. Cindy is a relentless worker and a determined professional. Cindy loves a good Chardonnay. <laughs> Cindy loves admissions and she was exceptional at it. Cindy's workouts are 50% physical and 50% social. <laughs> That's being generous. <laughs> Cindy understands relationships and connections and she utilized that knowledge, understanding, and skill set in impressive ways throughout her career at Millbrook. Cindy definitely has a look for you when she is displeased with something. <laughs> Rick, would you agree? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Daily. <laughs> they need to go there, Rick. <laughs> I think you can learn that now. But after the look, she gets quiet and you feel somewhat guilty. <laughs> Fortunately, she was mostly pleased with me and my work. Cindy's love for Millbrook is immeasurable, and her care for and unwavering commitment to this school and for those who worked with and for her is extraordinary. For Cindy, Millbrook is more than a remarkable school. It is home. I have come to realize and deeply respect that all of the anxiety, analysis, stress, and deliberation that went, went into any admissions decision stem not just from getting it right, but from making sure that students who enrolled at Millbrook would treat the school as though it were their home, too. They would be just the kind of young women and men that Cindy would be proud to have as Trevor or Carly's friends or classmates. Admissions work is vital to the health and success of any school. Being responsible for leading this essential work is an enormous responsibility and opportunity. For all those years that you not only welcomed but embraced this responsibility and opportunity, and for playing such an integral role in advancing the school in this way, I say thank you. When my time in admissions had run its course and I was ready for new challenges, Cindy did what any good parent would do, she let me move on. She didn't hold a grudge or resent my decisions. Rather, I believe her support for me grew even stronger. It's not easy being a dean of students. Decisions are often debated or questioned, 
or there are times when some pieces of information can't or shouldn't be shared. <coughs> to know that I had a colleague and friend like Cindy in the community to take a moment to say, I know him, I trust him, and he'll get it right, it was so reassuring and helpful to me. Again, I say, thank you. Well, we are here to honor Cindy. I feel that this, all, this is also an important opportunity to celebrate the McWilliams family. 41 years, right? Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Not to make you feel old, but I'm 42 years old. <laughs> It's impossible to thank of Millbrook without thanking two of Rick, Trevor, Carly, and Cindy. For so many years, they were a second family to me, to Jody, and to our two boys, Russell and William. Poor Rick didn't realize that when Cindy and Millbrook hired me, his grocery bill at Moronas would double <laughs> from all the meals I and then our family enjoyed at the McLean's house. As a family, you embody the very finest attributes of Millbrook. You value relationships and people. You are kind and good-natured. You are remarkably talented in your own unique ways while being equally humble and beautifully understated. And you have shaped, cared for, and inspired generations of students in profound and meaningful ways. <clears throat> Much like Millbrook, the McWilliams family will always hold a special place in our hearts. Sydney, on behalf of our entire family, congratulations. We love you. And thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Is Zoe Chapman in the house? <laughs> Zoe Chapman from the class of 2003. <laughs> The third generation of Chapins to come to Milbrook. So. Sydney was one of the main reasons that I ended up in Milbrook. While boarding schools, and Milbrook in particular, have been a part of my dad's family history for a very long time, the idea of attending one just never came up in my house. I wasn't really even aware of them. But when it came time to look at high schools, my dad took me to, to see Millbrook since he had loved his time here. Now I know I must have known that I was being interviewed when I walked into Cindy's office, but I honestly have never remembered it that way. I felt so completely at ease with her. Um, I recall our conversation was just that, a conversation with someone who was funny and kind, um, who was just asking a lot of questions. Uh, sometime during that hour or so visit, I unequivocally decided that not only was I interested in attending boarding school, but I was going to go to Millbrook. Cindy became my advisor, consistently and gently offering guidance and wisdom throughout my four years here. Sadly for me, the thing that stands out the most was when I got caught sneaking out of my dorm and into a guy's room. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> uh, Cindy's response after, after I basically turned myself in because I was super cool, um, was not anger or even the traditional, I'm very disappointed in you, young lady. It was more kind of a confused disappointment of, really, why would you do that? <laughs> With that guy? <laughs> I had some sort of fitting punishment, but it was her knowing nod of, that was dumb, you do, you know better than that, and uh, you know you know better than that, was what, was, was what stayed with me. It was a larger life lesson of self-worth than simply being grounded could ever have provided. This brings me to my most favorite memory and my point. Um, this past fall when I came to campus to participate in the panel, I stayed with Cindy and Rick in their beautiful house. The talk was really interesting and it was wonderful to see all of the changes that have happened here on campus. But the best part was after the talk. When we went back to her house and changed into pajamas and split an entire bottle of that Chardonnay <laughs> while going on a cheese plate and catching up. While, while Cindy has been always an advisor, a mentor, and a source of wisdom for me, she has also always been a friend. I think she could see that potential in me as a 13-year-old and that kind of faith made all the difference. So I'm grateful to have met her, 
and to have had her support in turning into the kind of person that she would call a friend. And I look forward to the years of friendship to come. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you, Zoe. And now it's my pleasure to turn to my godson, Trevor Higuides. Uh, the McWilliams kids were instructed to keep their comments brief, so I'll do my best. <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> it certainly is surreal seeing my mom joining my dad in retirement after watching them both spend their entire careers here in Millbrook. I've never known another reality. This place has always been synonymous with home and family, and so it shall remain. My oldest and dearest friends in the world either grew up with me here on campus or mere miles away. I am so thankful that my parents chose to raise my sister and I within this community that has always embraced our family through each and every phase of our lives. As you all know by now, my mom's memory is long. <laughs> There's no way to quantify the institutional knowledge she carries with her at all times. Her mind is a steel trap filled with countless anecdotes and connections that serve as an internal roadmap through her 41 years of service and life at Millbrook, as well as the lives and experiences of so many others. My mom has always loved a good story, a decent conversation, so I believe that her roles as Director of Admissions and Director of Alumni and Constituent Relations have been great fits. These jobs required her to tap into an innate curiosity about who all applicants, <coughs> students, and alumni really are as people. She learned and remembered what brought so many to Millbrook and what kept them here and where they've gone with their own lives ever since. As someone on the inside, I can assure you that she remembers you all because she cares and cares deeply. These roles also always required my mom to ask great questions and nurture connections, two things that also come rather naturally. To her, great questions are the building blocks for relationships because they create exchanges that connect people in the most fundamental ways. <coughs> she has always taken special care of the answers she receives, which is a big part of who she is. My mom memorizes a person's strengths and finds value in their vulnerabilities. I learned quickly from her that I need to pay particular attention to the quality of company that I keep, because our community of family and friends is everything. A good friend will always find a way to show up, she says. She also taught me how to embrace this school as a home and recognize just how many wonderful friends and family we have known here and who are here today. She didn't just teach, teach her children, she showed every interviewing family, advisee, babysitter, colleague, and alum that this place was her home, where she raised her family, and she encouraged everyone to see Millbrook as more than just a school. While my mom never officially taught in the classroom, she's one of the finest educators I have known. She leads by example, with humility, looks people in the eye, smiles, and remembers to be herself no matter what. And like any good teacher, she embraces what she does not know, so she may always go on learning. Thanks to her, I learned that a passion truly can lead to a profession. She took her love for people and turned connecting into an art. Her business has always been deeply personal, which in my opinion is what led to such great success. So, congratulations, Mom, on all of your success. And thank you all for being here to celebrate one of Millbrook's finest. Thank 
you, Trevor. <laughs> now batting clean up today. <laughs> I, Rick McWilliams thinks he's the funniest guy in the family. Carly's the funniest. <laughs> I give you Carly McWilliams in a class of old five. Full disclosure, we practiced this morning and it did not go well. <laughs> um, thank you all for coming. It's, one, it's wonderful to hear that you all have such respect and the same experience with my mom as I do. I don't think, oh gosh. <laughs> Just stand behind dad. Remember what I said, now you can look around. Don't be better, don't be better this way. Just, Carly, look in the crowd and no. nobody has clothes on. No. <laughs> That's why public speaking was not part of his job description. Um, Today is a double celebration for our family. We're ce celebrating the beginning of my mom's retirement and the end of my father's. <laughs> I'm not laughing. My mom's desire to try new things has reached a new level as she is prepared for retirement and all the things she will do to fill her time. A few weeks ago, she called me as I was making my way through D.C. traffic to tell me she had gone bird watching at 6.30 that morning with students because it seemed interesting and something she hadn't done before. <laughs> as wonderful it is um, to see you all here to celebrate my mom, I know she won't be able to put into words exactly how much this means to her and how much all of you mean to her. She updates us on, on alumni as if she is speaking of us her own children. She is thrilled by your successes and always wants to find a way to help when you face challenges. I'll keep my remarks today short, and if I was really being thorough, I would need hours, which would interrupt the parade and Bob, I would be upset. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been very close with my mom. In fact, many of you likely only remember me attached to my mom's hip. Our relationship and my appreciation for her career in particular grew to a new level of understanding when I started my own career in Washington, D.C. My mom used to tell me, you're going to have to stand behind Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom used to tell me, often after my own basketball games growing up, that she played basketball growing up on a half court. <laughs> she also told me that she wasn't much of a student and she did not have a career plan, that she was not there was never an expectation that one day she would be sitting at a board meeting or speaking at conferences, but she did. In fact, she even had a cult-like following at TAB's admissions conferences, which I got to witness while in Washington, D.C. She started at, at Millbrook after marrying my dad and moving into South Dorm while working as Herb Wilkinson's assistant in admissions. I'm surprised she stuck with it. But. <laughs> <laughs> she was woken every morning at 5.30 a.m. by his headlights because he parked right outside the dorm. Perhaps it was that daily occurrence that made her insist on being on time to meetings. She had various positions before becoming director of admissions, and it came from her hard work and her willingness to say yes, despite her discomfort and fears. I witnessed her face many of her fears and challenges. When I was younger, I was really unable to understand her fears because I was too consumed by my own. But looking back, I remember her first trip to Asia when I was in fourth grade. She was nervous to travel so far away, but I think her biggest fear was leaving me and Trevor for such a long time. She thought it would help if she put a map of the world on the glass door in the sunroom so we could see all the places she was going. It's completely backfired. It really just it terrified me that she was so far away. <laughs> um, well, it was traumatic for, traumatic for us all, especially my dad, because he kept trying to negotiate with me not to cry while on the phone with my mom, because it upset her so much. We survived. I had the opportunity in 2008 to join her on her annual trip to Asia. It was a memorable experience to travel with my mom and see how she was welcomed with such respect and affection by the many Millbrook families. There was a profound relationship between the families and my mom. She had, 
She had a deep connection with them, both as a representative of the school and as a parent. They made their affectionate appreciation for her and Milbrook very clear in every gesture. I remember many of the milestones. I remember when the admissions office moved to Callard House. I was not supportive because I liked her office in the schoolhouse that had a big closet where I could eat dry hot chocolate mix. <laughs> <laughs> and generally, I'd never support change. But I remember my mom and I going shopping. It was delicious. I heard him say it was disgusting. <laughs> going to shopping to help decorate the new offices. I believe many of the things we, we bought there are still there. Most recently, I noticed the green lamps we bought that were in John Downs' office and the umbrella stand to the left of the front door is what we also purchased. <laughs> no one asked her to do it. It was a responsibility she took upon herself. It was important to her that the office was a welcoming environment for families and students. She also took her role as a boss very seriously. She wanted to enjoy their work and have the opportunity to grow professionally. Those that worked in admissions were part of our family. Before they moved on campus, she made sure their apartments or houses were set up and clean, even if it meant I had to clean them. <laughs> uh, she would give them welcome baskets and had them over for dinner shortly thereafter to welcome them to the community. When she took on the new challenge of constituent relations in the annual fund eight years ago, it made complete sense. And her willing, with her willingness to take on a new challenge, she embraced the opportunity and helped the school meet new milestones of alumni engagement and participation. Her dedication to the school and the students is something I've always admired. It's been her dedication and her love of people that has driven her success. Working with high schoolers has taught her to measure people by their intention and to understand that mistakes are made and can be corrected. She's committed to people and their success. She has a special connection and commitment, especially with the female alumni, as she was here to witness each of them go to Millbrook. As someone that did not consider herself much of a student and did not plan a robust career, but who reached great professional success, she wants to support them professionally and personally. She wanted to create a strong network of Millbrook women. And I believe she has succeeded. Her work in particular, putting a women's event in New York City together every year, is a true culmination of her many works and efforts. I know many of her efforts and work will never be known, because that's how she wants it. But I want you to know that Mom, your tireless work has made a difference. And your support for this community and the individuals that are part of it is remarkable. And you've made the world better. To my dear friend and colleague for the oh, last no. 41 oh, years, no. <laughs> thank you for enriching my life, my family's life, and for being here for four decades. Pretty good. I didn't get the memo, but I'm following you at some point. <laughs> On behalf of the Millbrook School Alumni Association, we have a small gift. I'll give you this on behalf of Gordon Penoyer and all of us and wishing you well. <clears throat> So touched, I'm overwhelmed. I am uh, looking around with great joy at so many special friends and faces. And uh, Bob told me at 11 o'clock last night that maybe I should prepare to say something. <laughs> Emily, you're on, okay? So I uh, I did. And so if you can stand for just a couple more minutes before we get you in line for the chapel, uh, here we go. Uh, I've had the best time <laughs> as director of admission. I love meeting the families, talking about Millbrook, 
and imagining your futures. After all, admissions work is listening and being curious, caring about relationships, storytelling about a place that you, and people you love. It felt like my wedding over parents' weekends, commencement, and reunions. Because everywhere I turned was someone I knew and who was part of my life. And all of these opportunities and relationships transferred directly to my time in the alumni office when I was able to spend time with old friends and discover the secret of what has kept Bob Anthony here for so long. <laughs> when Trevor was in kindergarten, we allowed him to stay home from school so he could attend his first Millbrook graduation. He had some favorite babysitters in the class and we thought it would be fun. <laughs> After the ceremony was over, I remember distinctly standing in front of the schoolhouse when he burst into tears and was inconsolable. We completely underestimated what this very sensitive five-year-old's mind, five mind, he saw only the ends of his friends. Of course, you'll say anything to a sobbing little kid, so we promised him. He would see them all again, <laughs> they would come back, that they would always be part of his life. I don't know that we even knew that to be the case at the time, but we must have sensed it on some level, because 40 years later, we know that we weren't just saying that to him to get him to stop crying. <laughs> we know it to be the case, that commencement is the beginning of a new relationship, which makes reunion, whether they're here on campus in this beautiful backdrop of a day, or at a reunion in Seoul, or Hong Kong, or Portland, Oregon, Washington, Paris, Texas, Millbrook is everywhere. And keeping those connections going for our family will remain an important feature of our lives. As I was preparing to speak about Jane Meggs, is she here? <laughs> yeah, okay, hi. <laughs> Uh, when she and Jono retired a few years ago, a dear friend of mine told me that the Spanish word for retirement is ubalecion. I know I didn't get that right, but you know what I mean. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel every time someone asks me what we're going to do. How do you feel? Is it bittersweet? It's jubilant. Not that I'm happy to be leaving something behind, but more excited to see what the next chapter brings for us. For me, wearing my own Millbrook pendant, standing on the Rick McWilliams field, walking by the president's plaque and seeing Carly's name, and looking at Trevor's painting hanging in the beautiful, beautiful new dining room will always be some of the physical reminders of our time here. But the relationships, friendships, and kindnesses that have been shown by so many of you in this room will always be in my heart. Thank you, Zoe, Ann, Kevin, Bob, for your wonderful comments. Thank you to Drew and my colleagues in the alumni office, who I think have worked really hard on this. And finally, thank you to Bob, or the one who shall never be allowed to retire. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gilbert. So, thank you. Thank you all so very, very much. the classes to <laughs> by the, by the uh, banners outside and enjoy this great day. Thank you. Thank you.